Join us on Taking Care of Business this week. I'm going to be joined by the head of our sales progression team, Jess Stevenson. We're going to be covering a range of subjects, including what sales progression is, misconception. I suppose that we're like miracle workers, and I wish that we were. I think there's maybe an idea that somebody could guarantee you a smooth process. And we're going to delve into why younger people are buying properties in Dubai. There's definitely people that are entering that are younger. People aren't just coming for a year or two, et cetera, et cetera. But we're seeing so much focus on wellness and uh, development and creation of parks and beachfronts. We're going to give a checklist to buyers and sellers. The amount of people that actually sell their properties and forget the keys completely blows my mind. Bring the keys, you've got to give them the house. <laughs> we're also going to hear about a race across the tarmac at a private jet terminal in order to get a deal done. I just don't like hearing that it can't be done. <laughs> Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business, where I'm joined by the head of our sales progression team, Jessica Stevenson. Hello. Wow. Went for it there, PK, didn't you? Full named? Yeah, full named. Um, yeah, very bold, bold intro, going for the full name, but we're here for it. Well, seeing as though you've kept me waiting an hour while you've powdered your face, checked yeah. if your laptop's in the correct and I position. I actually look completely the same as I did um, five minutes Two hours ago. ago. So, um, yeah, good good start. Good. Yeah. Well, we're going to be talking about how you and your team actually do take care of a lot of business for the company and a lot of our clients. Yeah, it's funny that we actually do take care of some of the business. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I'm yes. going to start with a question, which I know you've had a lot, but for people who've maybe not heard before, what is sales progression? <laughs> do you want to be a meme again? Yeah. That's what it is, PK. <laughs> You're just here for the memes. <laughs> Um, so the sales progression um, team, if you're coming from a European background, it would maybe be something like conveyancing that we would have in the UK. Um, in Europe, you might do it with a solicitor or a lawyer. Um, it's the team who will handle a transaction from the point that a contract is signed. So once you've signed your unified form F, that's pro that will need managing from that point to the point of actually transferring the ownership of the property from seller to buyer and everything that happens in between. So the unified form F for people that don't know is pretty much the sales contract. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the agreement of sale, MOU, um, sales contract. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, in Dubai, you will always, you'll actually sign the binding contract first rather than on the last, last day. So you enter into the contract immediately once everything's agreed. Okay, I'm going to hit you with the first tough question. Well, things are tough questions. We hear a lot on Facebook. <laughs> um, why don't real estate agents do the sales progression? Why do we need a separate team? Well, it's definitely a different skill set. It's 100% different. Um, you wouldn't really want to be having an agent who has their own skill sets um, with sales. They may not be the best with process. Um, it's a much more specialist kind of field to go into. So it's not the negotiation part. There's still little bits that will need negotiating along the way. So it's good for anyone actually doing sales progression to have that skill but that's not the main sort of focus. It's very much um, protecting all the parties, liaising with all of the stakeholders in the deal. Um, the agent and the sales progression officer, just different different skill sets, I would say. So I wouldn't want to do, to have, an, I want an agent to sell my house. I want them to get me into a contract, get me all of that done. 100%, they do a brilliant job at that. And then pass on to somebody who's more specialized in this part of the process. Yeah, I agree. And it's the same reason why estate agents in the UK don't do the exactly. self-progression process or, yeah. like you say, parts of Europe and, and what have you. What are some popular misconceptions about sales progression? Um, that I suppose that we're like miracle workers and I wish that we were. Um, and I think there's maybe an idea that somebody could guarantee you a smooth process. I don't think anybody in any situation can ever guarantee you a smooth process, whether you're buying, renovating, which you've listened to me for the last six months moaning about renovating, um, a property. Nobody Watch can really Instagram. do that. If anyone wants to <laughs> join the pain. Yeah, if anybody <laughs> wants to live through the the, um, the pain with me and renovate my property, it's Jess Talks Property and you can see the um, the pain that I'm going through and I can share some of, hopefully it will help somebody else not go through that. Um, it looks great though, I suppose that's what the end result is. But anyway, take it back to uh, sales progression. Um, I think this idea that somebody could really guarantee that for you or that it's going to be smooth. There's so many stakeholders. There isn't just the buyer and the seller. You've got developers involved. There's banks, maybe one side, maybe both sides. Things change with the land department and we're ahead of all of that. We're ahead of the curve with, with any kind of new developments. But I think it's important to have somebody experienced there who does this day to day 
Um, but not to expect that we can control everything in, in the market, that everything is is within our control. I think that's a tough one. So let's come on to the banks because I think I've spoken about it, maybe Mark on a podcast before, and I know that Connor's been on a, a, a podcast, but the banks are exceptionally busy yeah. at the moment, as we know. So what, what impact is that having on your team? And well, uh, sorry, not just your team, but buyers and sellers in the market. Yeah, it, it does slow down sales and cause massive frustration. Of course, as, as a buyer, you it's so exciting, like you've just signed your sale contract, I just need to get my mortgage, and you want to get everything going. But things are delayed, um, whether it's um, just sheer volume of people applying for mortgages. I think there have been hundreds of mortgage applications. What I tend to see is that different banks will offer a really good rate, and they may not have the sort of back and staff that can actually handle that potentially. So they'll become extremely popular for a very short period of time. And then it will move, it will shift to the next bank that's offering the really good rate. So that does happen. And the challenges are, of course, delays, um, which impact people's lives in lots of different ways. Like I've got the kids starting school, or I need to move in, my tenancy's ending. There's so many like nuanced different ways that that can affect an individual. Um, And from a seller's perspective, it's even more frustrating because you're, there's nothing on that end that you can really help with. So I've agreed to sell my property, but I'm I'm sort of stuck here in just waiting and it can feel a little bit like maybe they're not going to get the mortgage or is everything okay? And it is okay, but it will feel very, oh, this this feels a bit uncomfortable now because it's taking time. But it, it, is, a, it is a process that's definitely delayed transactions. Um, so how are we recently. advising, sorry to interrupt again, so how are we advising clients at the moment? So say a file comes over to your, or sorry, one of your team's desk. How's our first conversation with a client at the moment in terms of what to expect over the coming weeks? If you don't have the pre-approval in, if you are buying with mortgage, then definitely that's our main focus. We really want that in, in the, in the first week. Um, personally, I don't know why you would go out viewing if you didn't know what, um, how much you can actually afford. I think that's, it's so, it's quite straightforward to get a pre-approval. And especially enter into a sales contract where you've committed to something. Exactly. And so many people do it. And I think I was saying to you um, a little while ago that I think people will just look at, I need a 20% down payment and therefore these are the numbers. I've got this much money and I'll be able to borrow X. But it's not necessarily the case to look at stress testing. I'm I'm not great at all of the ins and outs of the mortgage front, but it doesn't mean that that's how much you can borrow, what you think in your head. So when you're spending all this time negotiating and you're negotiating maybe between a couple of hundred thousand dirhams, it might have all been in vain because you don't know how much you need to, you actually need, um, you can borrow anyway. So that is so important to get the pre-approval and get the valuation done uh, quickly. That's that's usually the um, first couple of milestones that we need in the, ne- in the in the first sort of week, 10 days, we need to be getting those those done. It's just so important to remember that there's another process on the other side with the seller. So buyers need to get the everything actioned on their side as quickly as they can, really. So timelines at the moment, what are people looking at? Say we sign a contract today, I'm buying your property. How long do we think the transaction to, should take? It's a million dollar question, that PK. <laughs> um, I think um, at the moment we have, with finance to finance, we've been around the 12 week mark. Um, that has been a push to get things done within that within that time frame um, but it's definitely like moving parts to be honest it can what what might be average this week we could easily see a big shift in the next couple of weeks it's it's so subjective and and really the market changes very quickly in that sense so within all that and the reason I'm going to ask this question is because I know that you've worked hard with your team over the last six months you've made some changes to structure we've taken more people on so Maybe just explain for a minute or so a little bit about how you have adapted your team and how your team's adapted Mm. to to the the increase in volume of transactions in the market and then things like delays and and everything else that comes along. Well, I think what I've really looked at the operation on it and I think we have got everything that we can control being controlled. So there's always the frustrating parts of I can't control what a bank does. Um, I can certainly push them as much as we possibly can. And of course, we're well connected as, as an established agent in the market. But there's always going to be things beyond our control, that and developers. But what we really focus on is what can I actually control within here? So when you are a client at at Allsup and Allsup and you do have, um, you'll have your sales progression officer, you may only have that one point of contact. But behind that, there is so many more cogs going on in the machine. So we've put in sort of layers of progression to constantly move things forward. And that's always my, my aim with the team. So we have um, people work, that work within the office and they are case progression only and 
They will do like email and phone call follow up. So anything that can be done within the office, any NOCs that can be applied for um, online, we get all of those covered. So that's ticking over. Um, and then we also have roles where they're literally just out and about all day going into developers, going into banks. And that's their entire role just to go in, follow up. Have you received our application? How long is it going to be? Just continually pushing things forward. And that's always the, the drive for us. And having that one individual, I don't think was, was, it was the answer in the market previously, but the volume of transactions, the size of the business, it's important that we have that that one person at the top as the kind of the project manager. And then beyond that, we we have everything sort of ticking over underneath. So there's, there's a lot going on within the business working on your transaction. I think what some people might not, not realize is that Dubai and the Dubai property market has come on leaps and bounds mm. with technology, but it, there's still a lot that is a manual process. So for example, some parts of the transaction will need to pick up an original letter or an yep. original document, but it won't just be that we have to pick it up from anywhere. It'd be one specific place that might be a 45 minute drive away that we need to go and collect it from. Exactly. And then you could get there and you, although you've arranged to be there at 10 a.m., you might be waiting until half 11 to get it. And Yeah, exactly. I think um, one of our team, Nora, she had to go up to Sharjah um, yesterday because they would only release the document from that particular place. I mean, they could easily courier it, no problem, to one of the branches or courier it to the client. But it was, no, you, it has to be from there. So there's so much that still has to be done in person. I mean, there's amazing stuff. Like the unified Form F is incredible. Like the agreement of sale that you signed initially is is registered it's actually getting registered there's, i don't know anywhere else that does that that's yeah. amazing um the form a that is the contract like to sell the to give your listing to an agent that's also registered um even your title deed comes through on sms on a link so you can't lose it and then so are all of your receipts the blockchain on that side of this process is absolutely amazing but there's so much more to it in the background that it'll get there. Um, and I think there'll be some interesting changes over the next few years as well. Good. Well, it's a good time to come on to the market a little bit more, I think. So we recently um, issued some comments to, I think it was the Collegiate Times, where we we talked about how more landlords are, are selling the property at the moment because of prices in the market and then how attractive they are. Property prices per square foot have hit a new high um, this year, I think, uh, from the July market snapshot, um, overall transactions in the market have increased 46% year on year. So for you and your team, when you're at transfer appointments, what are you guys seeing in terms of who's buying and selling? Are people buying to invest still, or is it more end users coming into the market to, to live in the properties? Um, both. And it's actually really nice to see lots of very young people buying. Um, and I think there's quite a lot of people even within Allsop and Allsop who have. So um, definitely people entering and every market is good when there's first time buyers, right? So as long as you've got first time buyers, everything else kind yeah. of moves up from there. So um, there's definitely people that are entering that are younger, they're ready to renovate, which is something that hasn't really been done before, whether that's for their home to live in. It fixes their costs as well, because rent prices have been so up and down over the last you know, 10 years or so. Yeah. So there's a lot of um, first time buyers coming in um, and your seasoned investors are there. Some of them are selling. Obviously, prices are, as you say, there. It's it's worth it um, for them to do so. But um, yeah, I have noticed um, quite a lot of younger people coming in. Or maybe that's my age. Maybe they're not. <laughs> maybe it's me that's getting. Yeah. I, well, I, no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well played. <laughs> but I think it's it's true. Like we speak, we've long spoken now about how Dubai's and probably brand Dubai won't like me using this, this term, but has increased its stickability. And what I mean by that is people aren't just coming for a year or two, et cetera, et cetera. People are now coming. Yeah, that's, but that's sticking in the city, like, like laying down their roots. And it, it's why we're, or why I feel we're seeing so much focus on wellness and mm. uh, development and creation of parks and beachfronts and so many amazing things go, going on at the moment. But it, it's to keep people... Keep people within Dubai, if, if that's the right way to word it. But, I mean, yeah. stop it being that destination where you come for a couple of years of tax free earnings and then, then disappear somewhere else. It's it's the place to be and the place people want to be and, and yeah. to stick around. So what you said actually ties into that, is that more, more young people are coming over and seeing that future for themselves. And mm -hmm. rather than, I think historically, people come over at a younger age and probably for seven to 10 years still, are we going to stay? Are we not going to stay? Yeah. Et cetera, et cetera. And Live then be 10 years, yeah, and, and be 10 <laughs> years older. Time. But yeah. now they're, they're realizing earlier and, and getting on the property ladder a, a little yeah. bit earlier. Definitely. Good for them. More for it. Yeah, definitely. Um, okay. We, we did touch on this before, but I want to come back to it in terms of 
you were talking about a buyer with, with pre-approval. Let's talk about sellers first. How can a seller best prepare for a property transaction? Because I think sellers will often focus on, okay, we're going to go on the market. Let's mm. research the prices. Let's paint the walls. Let's declutter. All, all the, the general stuff that you would do yeah. before you come onto the market. But maybe not so much uh, in terms of thinking about what they're going to do when they actually find a buyer. So yeah. from that respect, how, how best can a seller prepare? Um, I think being um, knowing like your availability, travel plans is a, is a big one because you actually have to be in Dubai for quite a lot of the process. Um, it depends on exactly the transaction, but sometimes you might have to actually go to the bank to request liability letter, pick it up and then be there at the settlements. That's three appointments before we've even got to NOC. So you might want to think about a power of attorney or you might want to, if you're somebody that stays in Dubai a lot, that's fine. But as long as you're liaising with whoever's doing your sale, making sure that you're actually letting them know. But digging things out, like when you've done any modifications, like if you've put, um, I don't know, maybe you've done like a pool or like a bar outside, something like that, which a lot of people are doing, um, these kind of things. Did I need approval? Have I got them? Having them to hand, um, making sure your service charges are all cleared up to date um, and actually having ready funds that you're actually going to need for the for the sale itself. So you'll you'll need to have liquid funds for things like rent refunds um, to pay the service charge. Uh, to pay your agency fees, you actually have to have that money ready before you're receiving your sale price on the on the last day. Um, so it can't be deducted like um, yep. like you might expect. It's it's something that you would need to have have uh, yeah have any amount that you're going to need throughout the transaction ready. Um, yeah, and I suppose there's some things that we need to be patient with, but definitely um, getting everything up to date. Power of, a, sorry to interrupt, power of attorneys, how easy are they to do? Who can people give them to? They're super easy. Um, we do them online mostly. Um, we can turn it around in one, two days with um, getting an online power of attorney. Um, I've talked about this before, but it is like one of the one of the main things that we really take for granted that you can attest that. You know, if you were in any other country, that would be going to the embassy, it would be going to the notary, and then it would come, be coming here to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I mean, it's hundreds of pounds worth of stamps yep. and all the rest of it and weeks. I mean, the ones from the US used to take like five to eight weeks. Yep. I think I had a quote for something to be attested and it was 16 weeks for it. For it. So um, we can do that with the remote notary. Um, you can give it to us to act for you, husband, wife, friends. Just pick somebody who's actually not traveling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> People do that. Like I've given POA to my friend. They're going to be here. Do um, away for six months. Oh, yeah, yeah. They're, they're off on their holes for a month. So, yeah, somebody who's actually going to stay in Dubai helps. <laughs> and so from what, what you've said there, someone could be watching this podcast from a, from overseas now, from abroad. Yeah. They might own property in Dubai. Theoretically, they could, by giving a remote POA, complete the whole transaction without ever coming to Dubai. Yeah, it's possible. There's um, It would take a few approvals, but yeah, we can do it. Yeah. Good. And on the flip side to sellers, the same question again, really, in terms of buyers, because again, they will be thinking mainly about, hopefully, about pre-approval, but mm. as you said, many not, but they'll be thinking about how many bedrooms do we need, what area do we want to be? Yes. Put all that to one side. Again, when they found something, what else do they need to do to make sure they're in the best position for the, the transaction? Things like your mortgage documents, it's going to be like salary certificates, pay slips, just getting your like life admin in check, really. Do you know, I, I should say for sellers, and this one really blows my mind, this, the amount of people that actually sell their properties and forget the keys completely blows my mind. Yeah. Like people will come and we'll take quite a lot of, of stick for it from from the buyers. You know, where's where's my keys? Like you've just we've asked you to bring the key. Bring the keys. You've got to give them the house now. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what we were doing Do you here. Know what? I can see but that. But there's though. so much yeah. going on, and of course, like you say, can you bring the keys and access cards? Um, but, but you're probably thinking, have I got and, this document and that yeah, document, and it, it just leaves you mad. People turn up and, and you're like, where's, where's the keys to? You know, the the, the asset that we've <laughs> yeah. that we're here for. You know, can you give them to the buyer, please? They own it. <laughs> yeah, it really blows my mind that. So something so simple, like don't forget, you are actually selling the house. Yeah. You're going <laughs> to give to. it to the buyers. That's that's what we were aiming to do here. <laughs> Um, and in the same vein, like like checks for rental if it's rented, like the tenants, like post dated checks, that sort of thing. Um, so buyers, yeah, you're going to have to just get your life admin in order, really. Um, I'm terrible at it and I would be digging around for bank statements, downloading all these PDFs and, yeah, just get all of your life docs in, and in check. And simple things, I guess, like making sure your funds are actually in Dubai. Yeah, do you have do you have any money yeah. to buy the property? <laughs> it's always an interesting, interesting way one to phrase, but, 
yeah, do you have a down payment for this? Like, where is it coming from? They, the banks are going to ask you. Well, and that's the reason like, we're joking about it. And obviously most people do enter into a transaction with money. But this, it's quite often the money's not in Dubai, it's overseas. Yeah, or and it, maybe in shares or something, yeah, you it, need to liquidate it. Exactly that. And it's it's not a consideration until the last moment of, oh, yeah, actually, my yeah. money's not in Dubai. That, that's yeah. something we need to do. And I think another consideration that for us is so normal because we talk about managers' checks all the time. But the idea of a manager's check could be completely alien to somebody. It's like a, like a banker's draft. It's a guaranteed check. It's the form of payment on the day of transfer. But you have to go into your bank and say, please, can I have this manager's check to Paul Kelly for one million dirhams? And you have to go there. We'll draw the funds out of your account and then you'll give over that check. That You're going to have to take some time off work. You know, yeah. you're going to have to go be at the bank at maybe eight o'clock in the morning. Might take you an hour or so, but you it you are going to have to move around to do but these things. I think things. this is a key point because we're so used to convenience of life yeah. now. That to tell someone... Online banking. Yeah. Oh, you have to actually take half a day off and you have to drive to somewhere, maybe 45 minutes away exactly. to, to go and see someone. Yeah. It can be a bit of a shock. Definitely. And um, we we do get into it because we, we're so used to it. But, I mean, yeah, you have to actually go and physically get a check from the bank. Right, so we've told everyone what sales progression is. We've told them how to prepare for a transaction, give some market updates and activity. I think to finish off on, let's hear the, I was going to say the most interesting story, but, but maybe the time where we've really gone over and above to ensure a transaction happened. Interesting question. Um, I have to say that I have to tell the story without kind of like implicating myself in any kind of um, sounds interesting <laughs> um anything that may have been been too much um but we did once have a really mad mad rush where me and my colleague um had to sort of tag team and she took the buyer to the bank to change the checks the land department had um actually demanded more um fees were paid on the four percent because we were actually selling it under market value um and meanwhile i dashed with one of the trustees to a private airfield where we had to get the buyer of his jet to before he took off wow. um, to finalize the docks. Um, I just don't like hearing that it can't be done. I don't like the idea. I, if it can't be done, I, I need to know that in myself, it really couldn't be done. So You've, you can't just go, oh, that's it then. That's conjured up an image <laughs> in my head of a movie scene where you're racing across it the tarmac pretty, to it, park next to the jet. The funniest thing was I, I did. And I think at the time, this was a few years ago, I had this like, this four by four Kia, which I literally threw at, in front of the Jetex terminal, imagine, um, just left the door, left the keys running, left the door open and just ran through this, this lounge. So an interesting point from that then is, what was that about a trustee coming? And is yeah. that an option for people? Well, it is. It is now an actual, actual official option. Maybe I opened the <laughs> maybe, doors. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> maybe that was it. Um, so yeah, we can actually now. Uh, the trustees do offer a service where they can actually go to your office if you need to sign. So um, if you were selling something here and you're super busy, you can pay them an extra fee. It's actually not not too too bad to be honest to get them to come and uh, take your signatures in the office. Um, it will mean that the approval will take a bit more time. And uh, the checks will come a bit later. But if you are super busy, it's there. And it's a, the convenience that we yeah. spoke about a little bit earlier. Yeah. Okay, Jessica, thank you very much. <laughs> you brave man, Paul Kelly. Brave Jess, man. Jess hates being called Jessica. That's the, it is that's actually the my name, but <laughs> it's a lovely name. It just doesn't feel like mine. Good. Well, thank you, Jess, Jessica, Thanks, Jesse. However we, however we name it. Thank you guys for however we name it. Sorry, however, you actually just however we that, name yeah. you. <laughs> Um, thank you guys for tuning in to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business. If you have any questions, comments, clarifications, etc., please let us know. Please listen, follow, subscribe in all the usual places. Thank you.